It is Dr. Sachs's soul that is being celebrated here tonight, his profound humanity. So at the risk of your looking away, Dr. Sachs, <laughs> may I not only have the honor of presenting you with this award, but also give you at this moment from, from all of us a collective hug and a kiss. God bless you, sir, and congratulations. Uh, for 40 years of dedication to the patients of Beth Abraham Health Services, Um, uh, Dustin, I was, I was quite overwhelmed by, by what you said. Um, I remember our meeting so well, and I've admired you so much since, I guess, since the graduate in 1967. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, in a strange way, I feel there's been something parallel in our courses over the last 40 years. But I'm deeply, deeply honored uh, that you, above all people, have given me this award. And of course, I'm deeply honored by the award itself. Um, I'm, um, I want to think back a little bit over these last 40 years. In 1066, that's to say in October of 1966, <laughs> um, I um, first went to Beth Abraham. Um, as soon as I got in, I was struck by seeing dozens of motionless, transfixed figures in the corridors and in the lobby, some of them looking as if they'd been bewitched in mid-gesture. Um, I'd never seen anything like this. I learned that some of these people had been in the hospital for decades and that Beth Abraham was first opened in 1919 for these first survivors of what was then a worldwide epidemic of the epidemic sleepy sickness, encephalitis lethargica. <clears throat> At that time in 1966, there was no medicine, there was no medical or surgical approach of any use to these patients. L-DOPA was still in the future. It hadn't been described. But the nurses and staff who knew these patients told me that sometimes they would respond, that they were fully alive inside and that they could be given a brief freedom by music. And then I kept seeing this myself, how people who were shaking or unable to take a single step could dance with music, how people unable to utter a syllable could sing or speak with these frozen people who had come to a stop inside, the motion of music, and especially rhythm, seemed to give them a flow and a freedom which, they, uh, which was unobtainable otherwise. When um, L-DOPA came along, of course, awakenings happened, but music didn't lose any of its power. Music remains for these patients and for all patients with Parkinsonism, uh, a vital thing in reserve, which they can always turn to. In um, 1973, when we made a documentary at Beth Abraham with these patients, when the film director arrived from Yorkshire Television, the first thing he said was, where's the, where's the music therapist? She seems to be the most important person around here. Um, now, Beth Abraham, it was most unusual in the 1960s for a hospital, a chronic disease hospital, to have a music therapist. We then had an amazing woman called Kitty Stiles. Um, and uh, she had a power of, of empathy and, and a dynamism which was uh, quite as important, I think, as the formal music therapy. Um, she never told us her age. And when I saw an obituary a few years later, I learned that she had died at the age of 99. 
and I realized she must already have been in her late 80s uh, when I saw her at Beth Abraham, but she behaved like someone half her age, uh, a woman of amazing energy. And then in 1979, Connie came along. And uh, with Connie, the music program expanded. Up to that point, it had been mostly devoted to patients with Parkinsonism. But then it was expanded to patients with strokes, uh, with speech and language problems of all sorts, uh, to people with Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, to people who were depressed, to people who had sometimes orthopedic problems of one sort and another. Um, and then, uh, up to that point, the successes of music therapy had been partly anecdotal. People had stories. And Connie said, we must have tests. We must have objective tests. And testing of all sorts started. And um, testing not only to, to document what happened, but to try and penetrate what was going on. So we wanted to look at the electrical activity of the brain, do brain imaging, find out what went on in this almost magical reaction to music one could see. And this led in 1995 really to the founding of the Institute, which you have been told of. And the Institute, uh, while it remains centered at Beth Abraham, is reaching out, has reached out to researchers all over the world. Um, 40 years. So in accepting this award, by which I'm deeply, deeply moved, I do it not only for myself, but for the patients at Beth Abraham. I should say that I've just written a new book about music and the brain. It contains, it's a little bit like the man who mistook his wife for a hat, except every story is about music. And many of the stories are about patients at Beth Abraham Hospital. And so, if I accept the award, it is not only for myself, but for these patients, and for the music therapists there, and for the whole staff of Beth Abraham, which has been my home for 40 years. Thank you very much. Thank you.